in brightest day, in blackest night. This is the uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition. I couldn't, I, I had to do it, I had to do it. And join me today as I go over part two of the Green Lantern comprehensive reading order. This may not look like a lot of books, but there is a lot to talk about. So I'm gonna try to keep it short and sweet. So let's get this started. Okay, now before I get started, I do wanna make one thing clear. Um, I guess I need to clarify this for our new viewers, but for me, my DC universe kicked off with Crisis on Infinite Earths. When I do these reading orders, I don't go over to Golden Age or Silver Age or even some of the Bronze Age. It's Crisis and After for me. Uh, now, one thing was brought to my attention, though. There is one book, or I'm sorry, not one book, but a collection that is out there right now. It's called The Green Arrow and Green Lantern, uh, Hard Traveling Heroes. It's a Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams book. But I wanted to bring that up because even though it happens before Crisis on Infinite Earths, a lot of the writers still acknowledge that road trip. If you haven't read it, it's worth reading. I just didn't bring it up in my part one. But I guess if you want to read it, go for it. It's a great read. And if you don't want to read it, you can skip it. You're not missing anything. Okay, we're going back to this. This is Green Lantern Omnibus Volume 1. So, where we last left off... The Sinestro Corps was starting to get formed behind the scenes. So everything is has led up to this crossover event. It is the first crossover event with the Green Lantern Corps. And it kicks off with Sinestro Corps number one. Uh, this has also been collected, if you don't have the omnibus, in a series of hardcovers or trade paperbacks. But the Sinestro Corps War, this is what you want to read, is Green Lantern 21 through 25. Green Lantern Corps 14 through 19. And the Sinestro Corps special number one. That's Green Lantern Corps. However, there is something that was left out. And I think this is very important. One of the books that I recommend to people to get is this book right here. The Tales of the Sinestro Corps. Now, one of these, a couple of these have been collected in the Omnibus. But what is not collected is the Tales of the Sinestro Corps, Cyborg Superman, Tales of the Sinestro Corps, Parallax, and, and Tales of the Sinestro Corps, Superman Prime. And I think those stories, before reading issue 25, play a pretty big role. I, I don't know why they were left out. Like I said, two of the books from here are in here, like The Secret Files and some of the backup stories. But for the most part... I think it's very essential to the reading order. If you read those, at least before issue 25, of course, something huge happens in that issue. And I try to stay away from spoilers, but um, sometimes flipping through the pages here, I, I, something gets ruined for people, even though these stories are old. So let's move on. What happens after Sinestro Core? And that's honestly, that's where this book finishes. We are done with Omnibus Volume 1. So we move on to Green Lantern Core Ring Quest. The Sinestro Corps War is over, and the Green Lantern Corps are assigned a mission of extreme importance to find the missing Yellow Lantern rings and keep them from creating a new Sinestro Corps. So, again, none of this was collected in an omnibus. It's only available in tr this particular trade is only available in trade paperback. There is no hardcover version of this. This collects issues twenty. And then 23 through 26. Now, you may be asking yourself, where the hell are issues 21 and 22? Well, let's keep going. Then we come back to Green Lantern Omnibus Volume 2. This collects Green Lantern 26 through 52, Blackest Night 0 through 7, DC Universe 0, and Untold Tales of Blackest Nights 1 and 2, and Blackest Night Tales of the Core 1 through 2. So you can tell by that, it, there is no Green Lantern core collected here. So, but what you want to read before you get into Blackest Night, this is my, again, suggested reading order, is you want to read Green Lantern Secret Origin. Uh, then you want to read Rage of the Green uh, of the Red Lanterns and Agent Orange. And this is pretty much issues 26 through 42. And these stories have also been collected in those trade paperbacks that I just named or hardcovers. But if you own the omnibus, stop at issue 42. Uh, so you can have a nice, long readathon of Green Lantern, and it sets up the events of Blackest Night, which is going to be the huge event. I mean, so this is where everything gets created. You have, 
yellow lanterns because of the Sinestro Corps. And now you have red lanterns. You have blue lanterns. You have uh, orange lanterns. So you're, you're probably asking, like, what the hell is going on? Well, everything is about to come to a head with Blackest Night. And I do want to talk about that. Uh, here in a second, but just to show you case some of this gorgeous artwork. By now, Ivan Reyes is the ongoing artist on the book, the main Green Lantern book. Uh, Philip Tan comes in and helps out during the o Agent Orange issues, who also has a very unique style to him. Now, there's a reason why Ivan Reyes isn't drawing Green Lantern afterwards, and that's because he goes on and draws the main event of Blackest Night. Then you have uh, Doug Mankey who comes over the book and takes over, especially during the Blackest Night parts, which completely fits it. Um, before you read Blackest Night, you don't have to, but you can read Final Crisis. It doesn't help at all because the Green Lanterns weren't really affected that much, but the DC Universe as a whole was. And then Batman R.I.P. So all you have to know before... Blackest Night is that Batman is dead in the DC Universe. Now, let's go and look at what other Green Lantern core books to read before Blackest Night. And we come back to this. Then we have Green Lantern Core Sins of the Starfire. This collects issues 27 through 32. Again, only available in this soft trade paperback format not a hardcover or omnibus so starfire and her samorans she's leading them on a new mission they're to cure the evil sinestro core by forcibly infusing them with love so now we're introduced to a new color here and again the green lantern core has all these amazing side characters that will play a bigger role later on and this is where you can find the adventures of guy gardner for the most part. And you also have some returning characters. Now you saw in the other book that you had this, the prelude to Blackest Night. And here it is. Here's another prelude to Blackest Night. This time, Emerald Eclipse is available in hardcover and in trade paperback format. So I decided to get the hardcovers because I'm a snooty punk ass bitch like that. No, because they just look nicer on the shelf. I mean, I know they're not oversized, but I was hoping one day we'd get an omnibus, but I don't know if it's too late or what they're going to end up doing. But anyway, this is Emerald Eclipse. This collects issues 33 to 38. That's right. We're still missing 21 and 22, but that's coming. I promise. Uh, this is where Mongol enslaves the planet of Daxam, which is where uh, the Daxamites from, making it his home world of his core. So now we have the Yellow Lanterns up there. And now, after the events of the Sinestro Corps, we have the Daxamite on the team. Uh, what is his name? Sodam Yat. That's his name. The Will Sodam Yat. This guy right here. Who kind of looks like Kyle Rayner. He now has the power of Ion. And he has to go and fight his home world, even though he hasn't been there for many years. I actually like that dude. He was a pretty interesting character, a hothead. And kind of reminded me of Kyle. By the way, Kyle is still in these books right here. And setting up the events of Blackest Night. All of this has been setting up the events of Blackest Night. Ever since Green Lantern Rebirth. And it was awesome because I remember the ad after Sinestro Core, Like Green Lantern Rebirth was 2005. Uh, the Sinestro Core War was 2007. And then the ad said coming in 2009, Blackest Night. I was so pumped reading these in single issues, and I am very envious of those that have not read these. So let's move on. Okay, so here you have two options. You can read the rest of this omnibus and get the, uh, the Green Lantern Corps Blackest Night hardcover. But if you have this, let's put this away for now. This has everything you need as far as Blackest Night and this huge DC event that I assume was only supposed to be a Green Lantern event, but they made it into a huge and awesome event. So let's look at that. So you no longer need to go back to this. Okay, Blackest Night, 10th anniversary. I always hated the 10th anniversary omnibus. This collects everything you need for Blackest Night. I'm going to try to flip through here without giving much away. I love the way that this is collected, by the way. I love the way that it's mapped out. I think it's a perfect reading order. So this collects Adventure Comics 4, 5, and 7. 
Blackest Night, the main event, zero through eight, who is written, that's written by Jeff Johns and then drawn by Ivan Reyes. And then you have Blackest Night Batman, the miniseries, one through three. Blackest Night The Flash, one through three. These are all three-issue miniseries for the most part. Uh, the JSA, Superman, Blackest Night Tell the Core, Blackest Night Titans, Blackest Night Wonder Woman, one through three. And then you have titles. I love this. Titles that were canceled and were brought back. So, for example, you have Catwoman 83. Catwoman ended in issue 82, but a zombified version of some of the characters that died in there, I'm not going to say who, come back in Catwoman 83. So keep that in mind. Some of these issues were canceled, and then they brought them back as a one-shot for some of them. Like Green Arrow was still an ongoing, and that's Green Arrow 30, Green Lantern 43 through 53, Green Lantern Corps, like I said, where it took off from 38. So now we have 39 through 47, Phantom Stranger 42, Starman 81, which they collected in the six omnibus. So glad they did that, and I hope they do it in the second real omnibus um, when it comes out. It hasn't even been solicited yet. Starman 81, like I said. Suicide Squad 67, The Atom and Hawkman 46, Power of Shazam 48, The Question 37, Untold Tales of Blackest Night number 1, and Weird Western Tales 71. This is an amazing crossover. This is probably... Um, Outside of Jeff Johns bringing Hal Jordan back from the dead, this was the event that everything led up to. And I was so ecstatic to read this. This was so fun to read every week. And look at this image right here. Obviously, I mean, this is kind of a spoiler. There is some gorgeous imagery in here. Wonderful artwork. Doug Mankey, Patrick Gleason, Ivan Reyes. And then the one-shots were great, too. This is Ivan Reyes at his best. You have all the colors of the Spectrum now teaming up to fight against the zombified blackest, uh, Black core. So, man, so badass. And then you have unexpected heroes uh, don donning the rings. I can't speak highly enough. And I know it's not a review. This is more of a comprehensive reading order, but... Scott, oh, Scott Collins does the Flash issues. Yes, oh, so good. Now, where do you go from here? You know, I like to sneak these in here. So here is Brightest Day. Now, this isn't really necessary to read, but you, I mean, if you've already invested into Blackest Night, you might as well read the follow-up Brightest Day. This was a 24-issue miniseries. Well, I guess that's a maxi-series. Um... Written and drawn by many creators. Like I said, it's not necessary as it focuses very little on Green Lantern. But it's still, you know, actually it was an okay read at its best. But let's go back to Green Lanterns. Okay, here is Volume 3 of The Omnibus. And before I get started, I do want to say, if you don't mind, please hit that like button. It really helps uh, with the channel and pretty much with the way that the video shows up in somebody's playlist or something. I don't know. Logistics and analytics are not my thing. So you have Brightest Day um, uh, Omnibus, and then you have the Brightest Day stories that happen after Blackest Night. So if you have this Omnibus, this is where you want to read it. It's right after Blackest Night. And this is vo Omnibus Volume 3, Collecting Green Lantern 53 through 60, Green Lantern Larfleeze Christmas Special Number 1, Green Lantern 2011, that's the new 52, 1 through 20, so you will see this again later on. Uh, Green Lantern Core 58 through 60, and Green Lantern Emerald Warriors 8 through 10. Um, so that's pretty much it. This leads up to the final crossover event, which is the War of the Lanterns. That's where um, it's all mapped out, by the way, in here. So what you want to read from this book for now, and then we'll go to Green Lantern Core. You want to read Green Lantern 53 through 57. That's where you want to read and stop there. And you can also read the Larfleeze uh, Christmas special. Now, let's go to Green Lantern Core and come back to this book. Okay, so here's Green Lantern Core. And now we have a new team of Tony Bedard and Adrian Seoff as the writer and artist. Tony Bedard took over the writing duties that Peter, T Peter Tomasi was doing on the book. So... Now we have a new storyline. This is Revolt of the Alpha Lanterns. Now, what is collected in here? 
Issues 21 and 22, those missing issues that I was talking about earlier, that's where they are. They are in here. And 48 through 52. And like I said, Tony Bedard now takes over the book. This book comes in two story arcs. You have Revolt of the Alpha Lanterns, which is those two issues. And then you have Curse of the Alpha Lanterns. And the, the only problem with this collection is that they are completely in chronological out of order. If you're reading through Green Lantern core storyline leading up to The Blackest Night and then you come back to here, it's kind of confusing. So, I mean, I, technically you could read issues 21 and 22 before you read Blackest Night and then come back and read the remaining issues 48 through 52, but that's kind of a pain in the ass. I wish these had been mapped out better, but at least they're complete and they are in here, which takes us to the next Green Lantern core book and this is the weaponer or the weaponer sorry he's the guardian i think that's how you say his name god i love that cover um he's the guardian who forged sinestro's yellow ring and when he was first exiled out of the green lantern core that that all happened a long time ago and now he's furious with sinestro because sinestro never fulfilled any of his promises he made in exchange for the ring and returned and enslaved all the Quardians to create his own core. So this dude wants revenge. So he captures uh, Sinestro's daughter. And then, what is her name? So, uh, Natu. Uh, Sornik Natu. But, so he wants to lure Sinestro to Quard to get his revenge. That's what this storyline is about. And sadly, this is also the final Green Lantern core collection pre-New 52. So what happened to Patrick Gleason and Peter Tomasi? Well, at least for Peter Tomasi, he's on his new title called Green Lantern Emerald Warriors. So at this time of Brightest Day, right after Blackest Night, we have three ongoing titles. He is joined by Fernando Pasarin as the ongoing artist on this. So here's what happens. This is the beginning of the third Lantern ongoing book, and it didn't last very long. Because Flashpoint is right around the corner. So I don't know if they thought about that or what was going to happen uh, with this book. But this talks about the Guy Gardner and some of the other Green Lanterns. And I think it's very... Oh, Kilowog is in here. So I think it's very important that we had three books. Because so the core is so huge, especially when you added all the other characters from the color spectrum in here. It's gorgeous, awesome covers, too. Um, so this collects issues one through seven of this new series, which takes us back to this omnibus right here, volume three. And the last things you should read from here is the War of the Green Lanterns crossover event, the final crossover event between the three titles before they're about to get revamped. And this, uh, this is all in good reading order. But, and there's also a trade paperback or hardcover available that's just called Green Lantern, War of the Green Lanterns. Uh, so this collects issues, or uh, what you want to read, sorry, is issues 58 through 60 of Green Lantern, then Green Lantern Course 58 through 60, and then the Emerald Warriors 8 through 10. And that is the final Jeff Johns event before New 52. It's a huge fight between all the different lanterns and all the different colors, and it's got some really good talent. So, uh, yes, they all switch different colors, too. It's, it gets a little ridiculous. The storyline it, itself was okay. I don't think anything surpassed Blackest Night, honestly. Now, but something huge does happen at the end of this run. And I don't want to spoil it because it really sets up the events of New 52, Green Lantern. Like what happens to Hal Jordan and Sinestro and the rest of the core. So I will leave it as that, and that is the final issue. That's issue 60 of Green Lantern. Uh, but we're not quite done uh, with the stuff pre-New 52. Where do we go from here? This book right here, War of the Green Lantern's Aftermath. This is the only book that, where you will find the remaining Green Lantern Core books and Emerald Warrior books. So this collects Green Lantern Core issues 61 through 63. It also collects the Green Lantern Emerald Warriors 11 through 13. And then War of the Green Lanterns Aftermath, issues 1 and 2. This is what happens to the rest of the characters after the War of the Green Lanterns, or War of the Lanterns. And that's it. 
their stories end, and something big is about to happen to the entire DC Universe. While all those Green Lanterns are out there fighting in space here on Earth, something huge is about to happen. Flashpoint. I think this is obviously necessary to read to understand the events of New 52. This is the event that I'm not going to tell you exactly what happened, but the DC Universe gets rebooted again. And it's a hard reboot. It is... It's, it's not like Final Crisis, but more like Crisis on Infinite Earths. A lot of origins get rewritten. A lot of characters uh, are new and are modernized. Green Lanterns really aren't affected that much. But I think it's also important to note that this is a important reading part of this. And that's where all this ends. And we got one more. One more video. I'm going to have to try to cram that all in. Less time than this one, and we got more books there. And that was the Comprehensive Reading Order Part 2. We've got one more coming up, and there's a lot to talk about in the New 52 and then Rebirth. So, leave those comments down below in case I left anything out, or if you have any questions, please let me know, because you know I love answering each and every one of the comments. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. Again, thank you to our patrons for voting for Green Lantern. Our reading poll is now up for next month, so if you haven't voted, vote for that. So if you haven't joined our Patreon, please think about doing so. It's a great way to support the channel because we love doing these kinds of videos, or at least I do. The link to our Patreon is in the description. Check out our Redbubble store where we have our Near Mint Condition logo on t-shirts and stickers. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be Near Mint.